Hello, my friends. Welcome. So glad that you're here for our special study group on Tony Robbins, a professional human design study group. Before I get started, I want to inform you, invite you, ask you if you want. His body graph share link is there, as well as the advanced chart here in our study group area under events. So this is a professional level study group. And we're going to kick it off with me turning it over to Mari Smith, who is going to give us a little introduction to Tony. Oh, happy second line day, which is great for us because we will see that Tony has a lot of second line processes. So Mari, would you like to take it away and introduce us to who he is? I sure will. Yes. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Mm -hmm. So for folks who might not be familiar, Tony's a self-declared world's number one life and business strategist. He's been called the father of the modern coaching industry. He's a widely known American motivational speaker, coach, and author. His most well-known book called Awaken the Giant Within came out in 1991. And I had a copy of that way back when and when I lived in Scotland. And it was one of my favorite books at the time. Uh, and uh, Lavina, have you, you, I know you mentioned you'd been to one of his events. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you've read his book. I personally have not been to one of his, uh, the, you know, the super whatever, UPW and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I was curious, just for fun, if anyone here, in, either in the Zoom or in your listening on your YouTube, mm -hmm. if you've attended a Tony Robbins event or, um, and or read one of his books, uh, maybe just pop it in the chat. I personally would love to know. Mm -hmm. um, so Tony's... Answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just just uh, curious to see. Um, I'm sure people are familiar with them, whether they've read a book or been to an event. But anyway, Tony's biggest influence and original teacher was the late Jim Rohn, uh, a fellow entrepreneur, author, motivational speaker. And as you just mentioned, Lavina, he's, he's coming on his birthday. He's going to be 62 on February 29. He's of Croatian heritage on both sides of his family. He was born Anthony J. Mahavarik. He's the eldest of three children. His parents divorced when he was seven, and his mother remarried several times, including a marriage with Jim Robbins, a former semi-professional baseball player who legally adopted Tony when he was 12. His home life, he says, was chaotic and abusive. His mother was addicted to drugs and alcohol and was physically abusive to Tony as a child. His family was even homeless for a while. Uh, Tony's enormous, he's six foot seven, during high school, he grew 10 inches, a growth spurt later attributed to an undiagnosed pituitary brain tumor. Um, as a young teen, he did handyman odd jobs to help make ends meet and provide for his siblings. And then in 1977, which is your year, Miss Labina, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, Tony's mother chased him out of the house with a knife and he was 17. He left mm -hmm. home and never returned. He managed to work as a part-time janitor. So here he is, he's 17 years old, he's flat broke, he's barely making 40 bucks a week, and he's looking to change his life, and he splurged $35, almost a week's wages, on a three-hour seminar with personal development coach Jim Rohn. Now, I know he has a 3420 exploration following one's convictions, a design of. And, and Tony says it turned out to be one of the most important investments of his life. Jim Rohn gave him a way of looking at life that allowed him to not ask that life would be easier, but to ask that he would be better. Um, so he began promoting seminars for Jim Rohn right away, basically became a protege uh, and a mentee. And we could say the rest is history because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that was, that's what set him on his path. So I have a few more bits and bobs to share if that's okay. Oh, yeah. All right. So he's known for his incredibly high energy peak state seminars with thousands, thousands and thousands of attendees from all over the world. He uses NLP, neuro linguistic programming, firewalks. I mean, oh, if you've ever seen him, even just mm -hmm. like in a YouTube video and in, there was a Netflix documentary, I'm not your guru, it's called, mm -hmm. came out, I think like 2016 or something. And what's interesting is he has the gate 58 in line three and 58, of course, is the joyous um, gate of vitality. And it's in the third line. And on the third line of the 58, three, it literally has the word electricity. Oh, excuse me. The third line is, is electricity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in the description, it even has fire. It has fire in the line value for 58, three. I thought that was fun. Um, oh, and then it's 50, he has the 58 
not the 18, but um, 58, obviously being part of Channel of Judgment, a design of insatiability. I watched the trailer. I didn't watch the documentary, but I watched the trailer of I Am Not Your Guru, um, came out in 2016. And he literally said he had no certainty as a kid, but he was certain of one thing, which was, quote, my insatiable hunger to end the suffering for any human I can. Mm-hmm. so um but i maybe i'll watch that documentary i don't know i find his voice hard hard to listen to after any length of time i'm very auditory yes. um so then very he pivoted to virtual lately. have you heard that yeah his voice really, has gotten really gravelly yeah and you know what that's from is his vocal cords are mm-hmm. extremely thin he's basically mm-hmm. ruined his own voice by speaking at these seminars for 10 to 12 hours a day Sometimes so shouting. and mm-hmm. he yeah, too much shouting. Yep. Mm-hmm. So he hasn't stopped since COVID. He's pivoted to to uh, virtual and he had a, I think it was in 2018 or 19, and maybe he saw this coming, who knows, but he had a state of the art studio built in West Palm Beach, Florida, where he lives. And it's a 360 degree screens, like wall to wall screens and cameras. Mm-hmm. So his main programs are like UPWs and Unleash the Power Within, Date with Destinies, huge ones, his favorite, he says, mm-hmm. Business Mastery. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. yours truly, I spoke there in August last year as one of his guest speakers. Mm-hmm. Um, but although I've never personally attended any of his in-person events over the years, I have met him. I've shared the stage with him a couple of times. And then I spoke at that Business Mastery. Mm-hmm. Um, and just real quick on the personal side, he has five children. Wikipedia is going to show you four, but he has five. Mm-hmm. He's had a brand mm-hmm. new baby last year. Wow. Uh, two, out of his five kids, only two are biological. So it's 59.6, of course, mating, design of reproduction. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, his first wife, Becky, he was married to her for 16 years. And she had three children from two, two former marriages and Tony legally adopted them both. Uh-huh. About the same year, 1984. Same year he married Becky, he learned that he'd fathered a son with former girlfriend uh, Liz Acosta, Jarek, Jarek Robbins. He's a motivational speaker too. Oh, wow. uh, and so a couple of his kids have children. So he's a grandfather, mm-hmm. but then his second wife, Sage, she's a Canadian gal. He married her in 2001. So we've been together like 20 years plus years. They just had a baby daughter April last year via surrogate. So Tony's coming on 62, Sage's wife is 50 this year and they have this little baby girl so he jokes about it he'll say you know i've got grandchildren and i'm a brand new father (laughs) but um anyway just lastly he has had certainly a number of scandals over the years um before marrying sage and some sexual abuse accusations just got that Mm fifty nine six or a breaker of course Mm -hmm. lots of stories of pretty female attendees you know brought to his hotel room he he made a very very inappropriate statement around the the me too movement and which he later apologized and Mm -hmm. um he's extremely wealthy his net worth is apparently 600 million he has an empire of 70 privately held privately held companies that generates over six billion dollars a year so we know he's got the gate 54 gave marrying maiden the drive his personality saturn Mm -hmm. and of course i thought it was interesting with that growth spurt he's he's got the gate of growth 42 right Mm -hmm. (laughs) his personality moon so um anyway the last little thing which i just thought was interesting was in an interview with cnbc in 2016 he said if my mom had been the mother i thought i wanted i wouldn't be as driven i wouldn't be as hungry i wouldn't have suffered so i probably wouldn't have cared about other people's suffering as much as i do it made me obsessed with wanting to understand people and help create change i thought that was certainly a good connection to 3740 Mm-hmm. Um, the channel of community design the parts mm-hmm. of the whole mm-hmm. oh and his personality son yeah he's 37 the, the, the family they get friendship so mm-hmm. anyway that's all i got <laughs> it's very generous very salient topic too mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that was beautiful mari thank you so much for even bringing in the activations and what you noticed there i yeah. love it yeah Wonderful. Mm -hmm. So we have this chart to play with. Thank you again, Mari. And please feel free. uh, All of you who are here in the room, you have the ability to unmute or type into the chat if there's something that you would like to see and or talk about. And 
I can see that you are all going really into the uh, charts, chats with each other. To answer the question, Nina participated in his recent online challenge. Amy, I too have listened to his audios, audios way back in the day. You know, I, I got into the personal development place space very early. Uh, Melanie says, not personally. She remembers her grandfather being obsessed when she was little. Uh, AJ hasn't attended any of these events or read his books, but watched a documentary on him and was very impressed. Agnes said one of her bosses was obsessed and constantly quoting him. And Naraya knew of him, but didn't know any of the details of the past. So she has something to offer to his channels. And I would love to invite you to do that in just a moment, Naraya, and anyone else who is here in the room practicing your keynoting skills. What I want to do with regards to studying Tony's chart is I want to bring up his design and just walk you through what's all there to take into consideration, to factor in, okay? So this is not an analysis of Tony Robbins. This is not what I would deliver to him, but this is a demonstration of, you know, just starting to enter into what is there to take into account what is there in context with the bigger picture of who he is. So we can go down into the granular details, see how many gates, if we just scroll down under my body graph, see how many gates are activated, see that he's equal parts collective and tribal, although he is way more tribal when it comes to definition in his design. And you can see this is a lot of emotionality. One of the things that Mari brought up that I was so, um, yes, that's absolutely him, you know, with, with the emotionality and the fire the power, the energy, that man is supercharged when it comes to his emotional output. And if you've ever been in, in the studio audio, uh, audience with him, I remember jumping up and down and screaming my head off in agreement because he has that kind of effect on people. Now, there is something to be said when you complete the stream of feeling with somebody and how powerful that is, that bridges my split. But this is also the emotional wave, almost the entire stream of feeling, as we can see here, that is the hunger for experience, you know, and to make progress and change. And what we see underneath the surface is that he's a hope motivated manifesting generator, or to be more technically correct, he is an, um, a pure emotional generator with manifesting potential. Okay, so now let's take a look at the line value just to see what we have with regards to our consistency of lines, the um, genetic predispositions towards this or that. We know that this is 70%, right? So if we see um, repeating themes, I see with regards to how many twos he has, that that is a very heavily weighted aspect of who he is. Not only is it his body but it also is many other activations in his design. So we know that this is somebody who needs to feel called or pulled towards something. And you can hear that the context of his life story gave us a lot of experiences, painful experiences in the first 30 years of his life. He you know, learned about the mistakes that can be made in the family construct. This is the pressure and the stream here that is complete, the only stream that he has that is totally complete, and that is about sensitivity, the stream of need. So you know that this is somebody who's going to be very sensitive to the needs of family and the familial bonds, and that he's designed to become a role model of those uh, bonding. And actually here, isn't it through bonding that he experiences his life's work? Because no, actually, it's through the mind. Sorry mistake, but it's through how he grounds his experience of living this life in learning how to be somebody who loves his work. You can hear that he talks about that in his work. Somebody who's on fire, on passion, on purpose, passion and purpose, big part of almost the entire centering circuitry. He has almost the entire defense circuit as well. And these are both sub circuits with regards to our human design body graph. The sub circuit of the defense circuit creates more on the physical material plane, more babies and more businesses. As you can see, look at the name of his business, Robbins Holdings, Holdings. He has many, 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 many businesses, big businesses, big businesses, $6 billion annually. My goodness. And also the individual here 
is very, 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 very powerful because this is something that feeds into one of the OC16 channels, which she also has. Uh, this is lower management with regards to who gets the work done and who includes people and brings people in. We know it's called the aura breaker. So he's designed to pull people into his frequency. This man is an experience generator with sensitivity to be able to create close-knit bonds and be a leader and a role model of such. When he's called, he has his ability to follow his ex convictions no matter what. Now, convictions. This channel over here is a mirror to this channel over here. You learn about that in your analyst training. Then now here, this is about the ability, you know, to live in the world and find one's place, love the world. But also on this side is to take advantage of the world that one lives in. And it is a very powerful vortex of energy that pulls people in. And we can see that he is a single definition. So his energetic flow, you'll hear a lot of his release the giant within. This man literally is a giant. <laughs> he literally is a huge person. And both of his Plutos are right there in that configuration with regards to his definition. We know that Pluto makes it very deep, very profound of a definition. So that's where I just want to take you to be aware of with regards to him being very talented. Mari mentioned uh, about the sexuality. This is a, a stream that is deeply sexual. This is a very sexual design, a very attractive design. And you know, you are either drawn to him and like him or love him, or you absolutely abhor him, can't stand him, don't trust him. Why? Because this man is somebody who is tribal. You're either a part of his work, of his tribe, and he will take care of you. He will educate you. He will support you to rise up because that's what ambition is about. And he will be the one that focuses on your growth to share that collective journey, that experience, to make the world a better place. You can hear it in his, you know, work as far as what he's doing. He has gone through a hard life, rough life path, uh, path. Anybody with six in their sun or earth on either side, anybody walking the nodal environment or seeing the crisis and conflict that is there, it's a difficult place to plant the purpose of one's cross. And you can see that he's a left angle cross of migration. So I would love to hear, that was a like a big picture overview. I would love to hear what you have prepared. If you have something that you would like to share publicly, if you want me to read it for you, I'm happy to just paste it into the chat. And uh, yes, you're right, Nina. I heard that too. One, one Thanksgiving, he was in, unable to eat. There was no food and his mom left. So he often shares, Nina is sharing how he uses his money to feed people. Seems to be a very important passion of his, his because when you experience that for yourself, you don't want anybody else to go through that. Yeah, six lines can be very altruistic. And this is literally the stomach. And how can we, he's, he's learning the wisdom about nurturing and caring for others. This is the corners of the mouth in the Ravi Ching to support people to be able to rise up. Their needs need to be met. And that's one of the TED Talks that he did, the six basic human needs. This man, not only in his uh, personal life but and private life, as we heard, does things in a big way because he has a lot of consistency to offer. Now, is he all, you know, exalted and great, really, behind the scenes? We don't know unless he shares with us his satisfaction or frustration. We don't know how satisfied he is, how often of the time, or how frustrated he is, how often of the time. So I'm going to pause there for a drink and see, Naraya, would you like to come on and take over a little bit of sharing your keynoting? Sure. Um, I only did two of his channels, the mm -hmm. channel of community and then um, the transitoriness. Mm -hmm. He's got a lot of definition. It's very yes. overwhelming when you look at it. You're like, what goes first? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You did good because you picked the um, emotionality, which is part of his authoritative process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Next would have been uh, 
59.6, but I didn't have time. Okay. All right. So, Tony, do you find that you extend friendship and people are naturally drawn, drawn to follow the behavior you model? You appreciate the value of your tribe, a community where you feel you belong and where you want to facilitate the creation of bonds that are fair to everyone involved. You're grounded in your will and authority to eject individuals in legitimate defense of the group, but may also find that this power and authority may at times distort your ego. Mm. You have the energy to respond to what is needed for a fair deal after you come to emotional clarity. It may take days or even much longer and is not beneficial to be rushed. You have all the time you need to reach this clarity before responding. Tony, have you recognized how truth is uncovered and the transformation that occurs within you when you take time away from others to recuperate and enjoy the fruits of your labor? You see life as a buffet of new experiences to respond to, and that emotional depth is the key to enduring crisis. Realizing that not only is the knowledge you gain from your hunger of new experiences that that's the, way to, the only way to endure, but also that people will pay for access to this knowledge. You naturally center your body with the understanding that creative energy ebbs and flows and that the muse must come and go. This lack of continuous progress could bring, it, bring with it fear of stasis. That's all I got. That was beautiful. Is this the one that said fear of stasis 35 two? Um, 35, maybe, hold on. Uh, that was look at excellent. My Great Thank example you. of weaving actual keynotes into more specificity with regards to what is there. Yeah. Yeah. 35 to the fear stasis. There it is. Okay. Excellent. Thank you, honey. Anything that you want to share or how that experience went for you? Any final thoughts? Um, well, when I was writing it, I, I really don't do good on the fly because there's mm -hmm. so much that I want to put together with things. Mm -hmm. And once I figured out what needed to be prioritized, it was quite easy one at a time. It's a lot easier mm -hmm. for me to break things into parts. Mm -hmm. And listening to what Mari said, I can already see these other, other parts of his design that she, I mean, she hit a lot of it there, mm -hmm. like totally hit a lot of it. It's really interesting how it all, yeah how it all goes together. And um, let's see, hold on a second. Mm -hmm. There is, okay, never mind. That was all. <laughs> okay, <laughs> wonderful. Thank you for letting me share. Yeah, thank you. That was awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, and we have all kinds of, uh, yeah, calming was a very nice um, experience that we got from Naraya. You could feel the warmth, the supportiveness, and her integrating things together, bringing, assimilating, processing things for us. Thank you. Uh, another thing that I noticed as you were talking is the Sun and Jupiter conjunct here. And when we see the Jupiters in the channel, this is something that is bringing good, for, good luck, bringing forth good luck and good fortune. There we go. And I heard you speak to the nature of creativity, and that was really beautiful to weave in as well. He may need some calming energy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there is a forcefulness and a, a pushing if we're operating uh, incongruent with our design that may be um, hard for some people, you know, to really, it's my great on your nerves, the sound, you know, oftentimes we can also judge like, oh, well, he's operating in not self. A lot of times Robert say, yeah, every, most of people are operating in not self, but most of us actually vacillate back and forth. We find that groove, we find that flow. And Tony not only is an, an experienced generator, but he is a generator of the culture, the way people do things. Have you noticed when he comes into, or he talks about going into companies? You know, this is a big part of being able to foster, and we know he's hope motivated, faith and hope and belief in having a place for people to love what they do with regards to what's going on here. And he's designed to be called out to that, not be pushing himself out that, but really responding to the needs of the community. 
And I would love to hear if anyone has um, anything more to offer. We haven't mentioned as much the specifics here. And so that's available if anybody would like to go into that here. There we go. Overwhelming like a, a wave of energy crashing into me, says Nisa. Or Nina, sorry. <laughs> the S's tripped me. Okay, so Mel, would you like to say this out loud? Yes. Sure. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. So I don't know if we've gotten here yet, but what I wrote is, Tony, have you noticed the way your mind can be so consumed with the desire to start something new and influential that you've launched things prematurely that then did not work out the way you hoped they would? Mm -hmm. That's a really great question to ponder. Very specific. Thank you. We know that where this flow is going with regards to a, a lesser known circuit, this is the stream of awakening. So there's a big part of him creating this place for people to come and be a part of something greater, part seeking a whole yeah, community, something greater. And he's here to be wise about the expression of leaping out of the tribe and into the higher self. And oh, Mari is saying spot on. He had a franchise venture that imploded. Yeah, so if the mind and it's not self-purpose tries to start things because it loves success in order to get whatever it is that he wants here influential, yeah, having the courage to start something maybe being able to recognize something that he sees that maybe could, instead of waiting for a response, waiting for emotional clarity, that hunger, that desire stream, yeah, this fantasy, imagination, desire, feeling for a new experience. I'm bored. I want to have a new experience. So my mind goes, ah, because, because, because I got to get it started. I got to do it now. I can't afford to wait. I can't afford to wait for clarity. This man, I wanted to share his unconscious mercury with you as well. Breakthrough, unique knowing that is both personally and collectively of value. And then on the flip side, where the value is knowing of knowing is more important than other aspects of the life. That's something that he's learning. Breakthrough insights with regards to, you know, taking an administrative or leadership role because our six lines are our leader, six, two, natural, natural. Now he's got a second line or a second color underneath. So it has to be something that is not about trying to fix things, not about trying to fix or being, feeling personally guilty. He is learning about personal responsibility that's in context with others. And let's go look there. Naraya says, Oh, yes, Melanie, I have in her best Tony Robbins voice. <laughs> yes, single definition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look at this, you guys. How, many, how often do you see one, two, three, four emotional channels creating the authoritative process? Not very. This is a lot of emotionality. And you can hear him when he tells his little stories about, you know, learning about the emotional needs and the waves. This is a stream of touch. He's very sensitive or not, you know, depends on the mood with the emotional wave as far as where it's at on this jaggedy rise and fall. And interestingly, remember I told you, all, let's go here because I do want to consist, uh, weave back and forth, maintain some consistency in looking at his strengths. This is, I, like I mentioned, the strength of interaction and the six, where he is right now, as far as his seeing, because this is part of his nodal path, his direction in life, where he's going here, sensitivity to controls, which may eventually reject intimacy because Pluto is there in relationships. So we can see the fixing and the detriment. So in this life, he is learning about how seeing in conflict, how the ability to secure position and create or secure support and create strength out of a weak position 
is something that is there. He's getting to the bottom of it with regards to what brings security in crisis and conflict when it's connected to the harmonic mating that results in conception. That's a deep <laughs> sexual, not just because it's this, you know, this process of being able to make babies mating. Best defense is a good off offense. Outnumber them all. These people usually, you know, if it's right for them, will have the ability to build not only family, but business. And here's the line of the Casanova or the femme fatale, seduce others to bring them in to what they respond to when they're emotionally clear. It's a very attractive energy. Remember defense circuit? Anytime you see centering or defense, you know you have a powerful being on your hands. Okay, not only that, this, this planet itself is deep and powerful, potential erotic potential uh, with regards to what Pluto brings. Yeah, same thing here. So sixes are the ones who set the tone for the emotional frequency in large groups. Ra calls it the pH gate, where it's just an open or close to intimacy. So he is literally bringing everybody in to this enveloping aura of his through his emotional generation of the wave. That wave frequency creates the stream of need, creates the passion. Whoops, that's very, uh, I colored outside the lines. <laughs> passion and desire. Let's see, Agane is sharing. It is interesting if he was speaking about listening to intuition. Ah, yes. <laughs> Some of the most psychically acclaimed people with regards to what they say that they're attuned to will use their psychic powers in their work. This is the gate of intuition. And we know that there is uh, energy looking for that. So resolving the fears of tomorrow, resolving the fears of failure, resolving the fears of challenging authority. All things that he's learning about, specifically open to connecting up with others. And this is a guy also whose hiddenness, hidden from him, is his recognition of how to massage other people's egos to get the best out of them. You know, wisdom potential, being wise about how to manage there, potential management potential right there, possible expression of management potential that's hidden from him. Melanie is sharing. He is the epitome of everything Ra has ever said about what happens to the undefined ego when they leave the presence of a defined ego who pumps people up. Mm -hmm. He can, he, he really can pump people up. So I can't personally, it was so long ago, I do not remember the name of the event where Tony spoke at. Uh, it was something that I paid to be a, a part of a larger conference. So I didn't pay specifically Tony Robbins to go and hear him speak. But I do remember that immediately afterwards, whoever came up on stage, I wanted to go and buy the product that was offered <laughs> me undefined ego. Yeah. Oh, I'm ready to buy. I'm ready to buy. He's worked me. I'm ready to go. I can do anything. You know, he's definitely one of those people who can pump you up with regards to um, provide some power that is there. Powerful power. Now we haven't talked yet about this completely resonant channel. Do you guys see what's going on here? The Jupiter and the Mars in relationship. We have a fixedness and both second lines. So let's go read what's going on with his personal law, hermit. We know that's the behavior gate. So this is where the literal line of the hermit comes from. The successful sidestepping of behavioral requirements through isolation. Because Mars is on the other side of the channel, it fixes the Jupiter into isolation to preserve independent behavior in the face of conditioning. We see that he has a, a couple of traits gates 40 of aloneness as well as that hermiting as well as his body is designed to wait to be called look not designed to be super active 
but more passive, relaxed, easygoing. I imagine he's mellowed out quite a bit now compared to when he was younger, when I was jumping and screaming in my out of my seat and screaming to agree with him. Yes, yes. He does that neuralistic thing, you know, say yes. And everybody says yes. And so you find yourself saying yes, because he, he does that with regards to what his emotional wave is bringing you along for a ride. It's so fascinating. Oh, back to where we were going. Let's take a look at that. Uh, there it is. Energy dynamics, maturing energy. You can call this. This is the power of the great, the gate of power. It's exalted because Mars exalts this line. So his power grows when victory is in sight because this is fully resonant. This is a very, very full on. You could say the hose of this channel is the faucet is all the way turned on. Okay, all the way turned on. He's not necessarily aware of that unless he has had the experience of recognize, self-recognizing his power. His power belongs to him and him alone. It's not for others, but in groups. This is what happens in the group dynamic. This channel feeds into this over here, and then it becomes something greater that pulls everybody into that frequency. So you can see we have a repeating theme. He's designed to pull people into his trip. That's what the sacral generator does with regards to the energetic availability to respond. In response, what can the energy do? Can generate this warmth and availability to bring everybody in for a ride, being sensitive to providing for the needs of the tribe, and empower them to help them find the higher self. So that's very general. We can still work in line values, but can you see how he might do that? You know, on this path of the gate of innocence, spirit of the self, where innocence is maybe lost or sapped of its vitality. He's walking on this path that leads us to embodiment, fully present in the body, treating the body like a temple treating a body with respect and with love. So you can hear some of that echo. Entrainment, entrainment. Yes, the word entrainment. When somebody this powerful, so please don't look at the undefined and think that there's nothing there or undefined splenic center and think that there's nothing there. What there is are vast amounts of wisdom so this man has the ability to recognize with regards to his, what's unusual about him and experiment with youthful folly or providing answers to other people's questions, their doubts, okay, recognizing the patterns and then being able to explain. So we're just looking at flexibility, not consistency. That's all. And in training somebody, recognizing how to manipulate them, I could see that for sure. Okay. He pumps up everyone. Yes, he does. <laughs> Defined ego or not, I imagine. Okay. He, he had Oprah Winfrey run over hot coals and she has a totally open heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This person with regards to where this energy is flowing, you know, it flows not only in that split that way, but it also flows up here. And I can't remember if she has one of those, but this, this energy would definitely feed into there with regards to, yeah, you got people in a, <laughs> there's something called group, group mind or hive mind, you know, the group effect. This guy can be a leader with regards to helping people have new experiences and isn't running over hot coals, something you don't do every day. <laughs> what else do you guys see with regards to what is there? Anything that you want to mention? Group think, yes, that absolutely. Group think. My computer just notified me we're under a heat wave. Really? I don't think so. 54 degrees outside. Psh. Okay, silly computer. What else? He's here to sell strategies for the family bond. Yeah. Purpose of filter mind, initiation of mind into the human, human experience of being a part of something greater and also the collective. 
Mel sharing way out of left field, right field. Yeah, my, my right, my quad right projector. She says, I wonder if his 25-3 has actually saved others from suicide by encountering him as a stranger of consequence. All left angles. Ah, thank you, Mel. All left angles. So yeah, left angle as far as this is part of his life's work with specific others that he has. A, I wonder what he did in a past life to have so many people he owed in this life. You know, there's a, millions and millions and millions of people who know this man and follow this man. Here's the gate of innocent spirit of the self sensibility in the first part of his life, walking a path where he learned about the recognition that innocent action does not in itself guarantee success. The power of the spirits to withstand failure and shock. And here's where the suicide thing comes from, Pluto. The potential loss of innocence through misfortune that in the extreme can manifest from crime to suicide. The potential loss of spirit through failure or shock. I did listen to one of his TED Talks this morning where he talks about, you know, if, if somebody's coming, say an athlete, and they've had some failure and he's got to, he's got to get them over that failure, I heard him say, or he's got to get somebody out of a uh, you know, daughter who is suicidal. There we have it, wisdom potential. How do we feel? How, do, how can we impart our wisdom, great for six lines, wisdom of the experience recognition of feelings, profoundly getting somebody through crisis and conflict, providing hope with regards to going a different path, a different way. Yeah, Mel, you didn't know that, that he does, Nina sharing, he does talk about people who have avoided suicide through his work. It's a common story when people share their story. Yep, absolutely. So Mel, you, you picked up in the field as quad rights tend to do. If you didn't already read that, absolutely. Mm, the sunset of your life is not 50. That is where Ra says we actually have the potential to be useful as human beings out in the world. So he's well into that. Did we talk about his unconscious values in the 52? No, let's go over there because I, I did want to go over there and then I got distracted. What would you like to share? Is there something specific, Naraya? Um, not, not really. It just mm -hmm. it stuck out that uh, the lack of strength where values are threatened by opposition mm -hmm. and conditioning. And that not that what most people come to him for is because they like are in situations like that. And they're looking to find a better way to do thing or like different value system. Mm. I, I don't know because I don't know enough about his work, but anybody else have a recognition there? I can tell you with regards to human design knowledge, we know that this is a relational wound and this is a parenting channel and having mama leave when he was a child and not be there for him to educate him. I imagine that, I, oh, well, sorry, it wasn't mama. It was father. His father left, wasn't it? I was projecting because my mom left. <laughs> Correct. Okay. Yeah. So dad up and left. And that was the Thanksgiving that there was no food. And so when he was able to, he would provide food for people doubling each year to the point where he had to get help and created a whole, um, what do you call those nonprofit org? Yeah. This is where we have institutions creation, creation of institutions that provide for the tribe. So here, this is the ability to preserve and protect the tribe. Yeah, custodianship is the whole name of the channel. Basket Brigade, Brigade is his big nonprofit that feeds millions. I didn't know that he owned that. I'd heard of the Basket Brigade. Thank you. That was very helpful. So yeah, being able to nourish, nurture people, they need food, they need education, okay? naturally recognizing what to be responsible for when called through his wisdom potential, recognizing what is and what is not healthy. Yeah, The not self is holding on to things that are not good for it. The true self 
is letting go of anything that's not good for it and having the ability to be in flow, flow state, rather than being rigid and inflexible and fearful. So this is his imprinting brought the fear of the past and fear of responsibility. And that is some of the things that we have here in his value system. 50 is very, very, very intelligent. We want to get away from the homogenized, oh, you've got a defined Asha, you must be really smart. Or you've got an undefined Asha, you must be really dumb. That's one of the woundings here. Like, oh, I'm not smart enough. As far as I'm not certain enough, you can hear it in his language. One of the things that he's grappled with and struggled with and, and challenged is finding certainty or not in his programs. I mean, I, all I did was just briefly you know, touch into a few places and you can hear him teaching about certainty what we can be certain of. Pure wisdom potential. What truly is inspiring? Who's interesting? Who's inspiring? What are good questions that we can find answers to? Because asking the right questions leads us in a specific direction. That's one of the six human needs. He talks about certainty and uncertainty. There you have it. Yeah, he is about a generator of recognizing what human needs are here, are we here to be responsible for? And what are we not? Wisdom potential of how to provide hope in that family bond, in that business, in the business bonds. Yeah, treating your business like family, I imagine, um, you know, besides the uh, crisis and the scandal that we might have heard of, this is a deeply sexual environment. I can't tell you how profound that is to know about someone. My poor daughter has it on her unconscious activations. Oh, please don't grow up. Don't, don't. No, sorry. Um, and I went through this personally myself for Saturn cycle. And I can tell you, it is fraught with emotionality. Yeah, emotional, sexual, deep and profound. You know, this process of friction in an environment where there is friction, that's where we can have growth. Growth is one of his, ah, conscious focus. We didn't go there yet. Let's go look at his growth. What he's here to identify with with regards to his focus and sharing growth along the path of his life cycles, through the cycles of his life. So he has the power for growth through participating in trends. Do you see that as part of his focus? Absolutely. I don't know if he has the growth which stops in reaction to trends or change, but I imagine that he's got a finger on the pulse. <laughs> Good word for that. Finger on the pulse of maybe what is going to be a value to his tribe. Would you agree? Rescue, save, fix, we know the line. Let's go look at his conscious values. Yeah, conscious values here. Energy to keep one's sensitivities restrained. He's learning about sacrifice in this life, how the need to limit personal potential in order to achieve a larger goal is at play in his values and in his relationships. And sacrifice can also fuel a lack of sensitivity. Remember when we have a channel, this is channel of sensitivity, or sorry, synthesis, a design of being sensitive. When you see definition, it's specific. So yes, he can be sensitive or not, but it's very specific. This is a man who likes a full larder, likes to have a lot of resources. You hear him talking about resources. What else? 49. Fully resonant, again, resonant channel. The hose is fully open. So this is a very powerful force at work. It's the drive to be sensitive to finding the right principles. It's unconscious focus. Moon and Venus are very beautiful in a channel. When a moon is in a channel, it's very alluring, uh, attractive. These are both fifth lines, very attractive to others who find his sensitivity to their needs. Powerful drawing. What else? Did you guys get enough of looking at details? Because I want to kind of zoom out and look at big picture view. That might be fun. Any other details that feel alive for you? Oh, 
I do. I sorry. I answered my own question. When Melanie brought up about have you ever started something, you know, the ambition for the material plane, Saturn, discipline, limitation, if not obeying his own law, waiting for the call. Yeah. Being sensitive to people's needs is part of his values. What happens? Saturn kicks him in the butt with regards to some kind of limitation, you hit a wall or something. So here's the line of influence in Saturn, the marrying maiden, gate of drive, the drive for energized through secret relationships, which, which fuel influence. Now, here I wanna talk a little bit because Saturn is also where you have some energy for work, discipline, you know? Uh, and look at the exaltation here. So if he's in, there, there with a, someone in alignment, what can happen? The Ill ability to achieve influence through secret relationships, anywhere from the private advisor to the Satanist. Is he the private advisor for big, big corporations and maybe people who don't really want everybody to know how freaking wealthy they are? How would we know? What if they kept it a secret? Okay. Ambition, which demands formal recognition and that can limit the influence. Isn't that interesting? Here's another. Oh, thank you. Yes, I would love to hear. Okay, so again, this is just kind of like something that's popping into my awareness and it's maybe not technical in technical human design language, but just okay. what really stands out to me from his incarnation cross and his notes. Mm -hmm. I just keep on hearing the creation of conscious community yeah and it's really in the because his stage of life i mean if you look at the 46 and the 25 it's kind of half of the vessel of love mm -hmm. the six and the 36 half of the um cross of eden mm -hmm. and i mean there's other crosses too but what's really it's like this how there's so much suffering in humanity where people don't love themselves where they feel completely dejected and forlorn and hopeless and just always in this crisis and conflict. And he's bringing that stability. He's bringing that support. He's bringing that wise conscious community mm. kind of into, into his environment, which is such a mutative environment. So I don't know. That's just what I see. Yeah. I love that. Thank you for bringing that to our awareness. I recognize that that has a lot of value. And while you were describing that of what his path is and how he's designed to see, remember he's here to see what brings security and crisis and conflict. One of the stories or um, the Netflix special that he did was, I am not your guru. And what do we call the second color? Anybody? motivation guru exactly right so that is a very wise person to proclaim hey don't follow me go your own way follow your convictions you know be in integrity with regards to he talks a lot about emotionality you know oh i love it i love it let's go look i wanted to take you guys on a little journey through <laughs> Look at me, experienced person with regards to what my process is, you know, too. Whenever I look at somebody's design, if I'm going to work with them for a foundation analysis, for coaching, for anything, depending on where they're at in their life, I want to see what they're going through. So Saturn, here he was in 1990. If you had the obsession of Tony Robbins and you knew all of his stories and you wanted to go back and look through what he lived, you would find the keys to the tension that was there and the determination that he had, the experiences that brought forth his um, maturing cycle with regards to, sorry, growing pains, I call it, growing pains. Good Lord, I love that, Mark, thank you. You can see the depth of crisis in his face and the passion as well. He almost looked pained by his wealth of giving. He has a very expressive face. All you got to do is go Google his, you know, pictures and you can see the, the care carved into his face, the lines, which so many older people tend to try and hide and cover up. No, that's experience right there, my friends. 
that is the tension that he lived when he went through his Saturn cycle. You know, Saturn returned seven and a half years before, or sorry, three and a half years before and three and a half years after at the most intense point. Now let's go take a look at as not as important. I'll just say this for the sixth line. Oops, that's the wrong one. It's another guy I like. Okay, uh, you're on a supposition here. Tony Robbins. Look what he went through at his Uranus. Again, not as important for the six because the six has a very distinct maturing phase, but this is literally where the time in his life, 2000s, when he moved from crisis and innocence into conflict and love of the body. Okay, that's when we make the shift right there. So I like to see, okay, what is this person going through? Ah, he's learning about uh, the other side, the other wing of the sacral, the defense circuit with regards to preserving and protecting and, and caring about the tribe pre preservation, the design of custodianship, and also about the logic and also about leadership. And there were people in his life who brought that into his awareness so that he could start to breathe his gifts out into the world at 40. Okay, around that time. That's when most of the time I get people in my practice is during this Uranus opposition shift. And Mari is saying, oh, when that, that was when he met his second wife, Sage. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. And Naraya is sharing towards Mark. I assumed that was all emotional energy. Speaking of the lines on the face, that must be what happens when there's four waves dancing all around. Good word, dancing in the flow of his life. Now let's go look at his Chiron. I really, really love looking at people's Chiron return when they're in that phase of their life after the fact, like well after the fact, what have they done with it? What happened? Can you see that his cross is the right angle vessel of love with regards to what he is designed to plant his own cross through is now the good conditioning absolutely required in order for him to live his life's work. Isn't that neat? I, I knew you guys would get a kick out of that. He is a missionary right now with regards to answering a call to bring forth love, unconditional love out into the world. Yeah. Here's the behaviors that we stand for as a tribe, as a collective now, I'm not saying this is the idealism, right? I'm saying what's there. I'm not saying that this is necessarily all that's going on in the back of his mind. Who knows? But here's the judgment. Here's the stories that he shares and the experiences, you know, his, his insatiable curiosity now where he plants his cross and really finding the logic and expressing the details, accepting the pattern, organizing with regards to humanity, you know, humanity there, we have the humanity gate coming in. So answering a call. Do you see him doing that? Anybody who knows him, Maori, maybe, can you see that part of his work now is about bringing forth love into the world? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. All right. That was the final piece. Ah, initiation. You know, almost the entire stream of awakening. Unfortunately, I haven't run his second Saturn or that top of the hour. And I would like to go prepare my slides for the next class. So I'm going to let you guys go. I hope you enjoyed that. Those of you who were here, thank you so much for your engagement in the chat. Oh, oh, Kezia, you did make it into the uh, room. I don't have to go and look at YouTube and see. Let's see. I always wondered about Tony, how to get rid of being a reflector. Oops. No, I wouldn't get rid of being yourself. That is the exact opposite of what we're talking about here, what Tony stands for. And what we're all moving through is this Pluto giving us a profound truth. This first step to transcending limitations is acceptance, acceptance of self. We cannot help what is there. This is the path of our life. This is the movie we're watching. This is the experience and the journey and the wonderment of what it is to be a human being in this body, at this time, in this life, that we can all witness and watch and commune with each other about something as delightful as human design to help us understand the mysteries in life. Last piece I'm going to give you. He's a big why person. What do you see here? What he's communicating? Getting down to the mysteries. Yeah. His communication and thinking, talking about why. 
And human design offers us a wonderful snapshot of why. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Take care. Bye for now.